My name is Gusta Johnson and I am proud to work at the Carnegie Council. The Council has been the voice for ethics and international affairs for nearly a century, but we need your help. To guarantee the future of programs like this one, please give generously to the Council's fund drive. Visit carnegiecouncil.org and click on donate slash join. Thank you. A global ethic, I think, needs a sociology of this encounter between the universal and the particular, and it's especially fascinating, and I've taught this stuff a bit, and I'll give you one example of what I mean. And that's relating to health and voice rights for women. Um, Western NGOs who promote health and voice rights for women have learned over time in developing societies that they have to get local buy-in. And what I want us to focus on is what buy-in means. How does that, how does that work, you know? Um, I contrast it very grossly with conversion. When missionaries came to Africa, they weren't looking for buy-in. They were looking for the soul, the whole of the soul. They wanted the soul. Conversion is, a, is an absolute uh, uh, experience. Buy-in is much more political. That's why I like the word buy-in. It, it suggests um, buy-in is emphatically not about the soul. It's an exchange in which one side offers to change a practice in return for respecting all the stuff they don't want to change. Um, Buy-in is a long negotiation between the particular and the universal, between village by village, community by community. As anybody knows who's talked to a, a Western health worker who goes to work in small village communities, that's what you're doing. What you're doing is not medicine, you're doing politics. And that sociology of buy-in, I think, is especially uh, fascinating because we may assume that the universal, the global ethic, comes to the table with the power and the influence and the prestige, but the power on the ground is with the particular. It's with the tribe. It's with the community. It's with the village women. It's with the people on the ground. If you don't understand that, you don't get buy-in and nothing changes. Uh, female genital cutting, to take a, the particular example I have in mind, will not stop simply because West, Western health nurses point out the septicemia statistics or point out the equal worth of women. Cutting stops, as we've discovered, when village women decide that they can substitute an initiation ritual that safeguards their girls' health without lowering their value to the family as brides. When there is successful buy-in, the particular practice changes. Fewer girls die of septicemia because they don't do cutting. But the universal changes too. The female Western health nurse discovers the importance for women of supporting local marriage customs even when they fall a little short of Western gender equality. Buy-in implies trade-offs on both sides. Female mortality declines, which surely is a victory for the global ethic, but polygamy and patriarchy may well remain. Yet that's not the end of the story in this buy-in thing, because it's an iterative process. First you reduce female mortality and genital cutting, and then it starts to roll. And that iteration between the particular and the universal begins to generate change if you get the incentives right. To summarize, so, and I would urge the council to think about the sociology of buy-in, how the universal gets bought in here, and how that works, because uh, it seems to me very important for the future of a global ethic on the ground, which is where we want it to be. We don't want it in the classroom. We want it on the ground. Mm -hmm.